country. I'm sure everybody would agree with that. But down deep, where it really counts, you are not very different from an oak tree. You are astonishingly like an oak tree. Astonishingly like an oak tree. The oak tree is astonishingly like you. Suppose we look closely at one of the cells in your body, and you have uh, something like uh, 10 trillion cells, so you could easily lose one without minding. We find that it does an enormous amount of chemistry, and that chemistry is controlled by molecules called enzymes. All the enzymes are proteins. It's a kind of molecule. And these proteins control what chemical reactions occur in your body at what time and uh, are really in charge of what the cell does. Now, the instructions for the proteins to tell them when to be made and when to operate are controlled by a different molecule, the other major molecule in your cells. And those molecules are called nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are molecules able to reproduce themselves, molecules able to instruct the cell as to what proteins should be made. The proteins are the active elements that make the cell do its stuff. If we could understand something of the proteins and nucleic acid origins, we certainly would have understood something important about the origin of life. Now, about you and the oak tree. If we look at an oak tree's cell, we find, again, the same kinds of proteins, the same kinds of nucleic acids, and astonishingly enough, the same code book, which translates nucleic acid information into protein information. The oak tree could read your genetic code, which contains all the information there is about how to make a human being. Your cells could read the oak tree's genetic code. The oak tree is not motivated to make human beings. Human beings are not motivated to make oak trees. But you could do it. And this is true, so far as we know, of every organism on the Earth. They all use proteins to make the chemistry go, all use nucleic acids to control the proteins and to reproduce and to pass hereditary information on from generation to generation. There are no departures from this. All the organisms down deep are the same. This deep relationship suggests that we are all cousins, us oak trees, us beagles, us begonias, us baleen whales. We're all related closely. And that's one reason why it's so interesting to look for life elsewhere, to see if life on other planets is built on the same chemical principles as on the Earth, or might be in some way very, very different. Now, I want to spend just a minute describing in a little more detail the proteins and the nucleic acids. To do that, we have to talk a little bit about chemistry. Before me on this table are models of lots of chemicals. They look pretty complicated. That's because the chemistry of life is pretty complicated. We should not be intimidated by the complexity. In fact, I will start with a very simple molecule. Okay. It's a sort of barbell, not difficult to lift. Real atoms are about a hundred millionth of a centimeter across. So if I held one up, you would have difficulty seeing it, even with the zoom lens on the television cameras. So we make molecular models, which make things about a hundred million times larger, and then we can get some sense of them. Each white sphere is a hydrogen atom. The two together make a hydrogen molecule. Each red sphere is an oxygen atom. The two together make an oxygen molecule. Each blue sphere is a nitrogen atom. The two together make a nitrogen molecule. Here is a molecule made, you can see it looks a little bit like Mickey Mouse, of one oxygen atom, that's the red, and two hydrogen atoms, that's the white, that's H2O, otherwise known as water. Now, let's find one other nice one. Here is 
one carbon atom, that's the black fellow, and two red atoms, th that, those are oxygens, and the three together make CO2, carbon dioxide. Now, the Earth's atmosphere is made mostly of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water. So if we were to grab a handful of air and look closely at it, we would find that it was made almost entirely of these particular molecules. There are other kinds of molecules, and I will come to them in a minute. But it's interesting that most organic molecules, the ones that life is made of, the ones that contribute to uh, proteins and nucleic acids, are made mostly of these four atoms, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. Now, proteins are built out of building blocks called amino acids. Here is an amino acid with a nice little ticket on it. It's aspartic acid. They have very nice names. And these amino acids link up into long chains called proteins. And I think it would be nice if we were to do uh, such a link. And I will need volunteers from the audience who want to be molecules. Please, all of you who wish to be molecules, please come down. And let's, let's line up right here. Have a, maybe 10 molecules. Um, okay, now why don't you all face this way and let's make a kind of line. And I'd like everybody, okay, that's, I think, enough. That's good. Make a nice molecule. I'd like everybody to do two things. First of all, stand, come over here, stand facing this way. And I hope you all can read. And when I give you the molecule, say what it is. Aspartic acid. Aspartic acid. Very good. And then, would you please say what it is? <laughs> Go ahead, give it a try. Leucine. Now, I would like to have a link between two amino acids like that. Good. The next one. Can you read this one? Glycine. Very good. Would you please hook up to leucine right here? Here is an alanine. Would you hook up to glycine? Very good. Here is glutamic acid. <laughs> Terrific. Histidine, you're a reasonably complex amino acid. Cysteine, you are a sulfur-containing amino acid. Not many of them. And asparagine, comes from asparagus. Good, and we'll do one more. Forgive me those amino acids in the back. Here is glutamine. Now, would you hook up? And may I have one more amino acid for me? I'll be valine. And now we have a short chain of amino acids, which is a kind of small protein. Now, this protein controls some chemistry in the cell. Not all the amino acids work. It might be only these four amino acids right here which do the work, and the rest of us sit along for the ride. And now we will have a little protein dance. Okay? Okay, now back the other way. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good. Now, would each person please put his amino acid back? Thank you. I apologize to those amino acids who did not get to dance. Now, that's not exactly how the amino acids link up, but it gives you a kind of idea. Many proteins are so long that if every person in this room were an amino acid, it would still, we still could not make the protein of the appropriate length. Many more amino acids than the number of people in this room. So that's about the proteins. Now, let me say just a word about the nucleic acids. They're made out of different sort of bits. A bit that looks like this, 